Hey everybody, I just wanted to come on here um, just for a couple minutes. I had a few things I wanted to share with you tonight. Um, I titled this Living in Expectation or Anticipation, the Loop Challenge and Waiting. So you may wonder what all of that has to do with each other. Um, I posted at the beginning of this month um, a, a post about peace or having peace in this time. And to me, one of um, the things that I measure myself against is whether I have peace or not. And so if, if my peace is absent, then I've got to do something, um, you know, to position myself in God's presence. Hey, Katie, um, thanks for joining. Glad that phone charged up. Um, but I, I have to position myself in the Lord's presence in order to, to be surrounded by his peace and, you know, spending time with him. And um, when I posted that, um, I, I think I also was talking about maybe the sermon that my pastor had preached that morning. Um, but uh, I can't remember exactly. But um, my friend posted a comment or either she posted on her wall. You know, a lot of things went on <laughs> this month already. So I might be a little off. But I do remember her saying this um, that really just grabbed my attention. And she said that their pastor had preached the sermon the first Sunday on are you living in expectation or are you living in anticipation? And so that really just struck me because, you know, um, what she was saying was if you're living in expectation, you're going to um, you lose your peace because, you know, people, it, it really even depends. You know, are you expecting people to do something? Um, you know, sometimes if they don't do it, you might get a little irritated <laughs> um, you're gonna lose your peace or you, you might even get angry you know if people don't do what you expect them to do and it's the same thing when we um, you know come to God with our request if we live in expectation like demanding kind of you know kind of uh, demanding him to do things then you know we're gonna we're gonna lose our peace because I can almost assure you God doesn't answer my prayers in the way that I think He should because as we find in Isaiah His ways are higher than my ways and His thoughts are higher than my thoughts so you know if I expect God to answer my prayers in a certain way and He doesn't I might begin to be disheartened and disillusioned and lose my peace and my focus. But what if we change that to where we're living in anticipation? So we're living with the anticipation that God's going to answer our request. Now, we're not demanding he answer it one way or the other, but we're trusting him and realizing that he's going to answer our prayers in the way that's best for us. We can't see down the road. We can't see, you know, uh, people we're going to come in contact with tomorrow. We're not, we can't see things that are ahead of us next week, but God does. And so if we live in anticipation that he's going to answer our prayers in the best way for us, then that is just going to give us so much peace and clarity of mind and, you know, trusting him. It's going to lead to that healthy relationship with him because we're not demanding. We're not demanding God to do things our way. We're trusting him. And so even in this season of, of Christmas, you know, live in anticipation of Christmas Day. Think back to, you know, how it must have been that long time ago when Mary was living in anticipation of the Savior. She was was um, carrying our Lord and Savior. She was anticipating his birth. And so that leads me to my next little thing, the Luke challenge. And um, I, uh, Pastor Chuck Hasty, I saw... Um, I think it was on November 30th, he came on and he did a Facebook Live and he challenged people to read um, the book of Luke in December, to read a chapter a day. There's 24 chapters leading up to Christmas. And so you'll finish on Christmas Eve. And so I accepted that challenge and I've been reading it. Now, I, I will admit there have been a couple of days that I missed, but then the next day I catch up and I have to read two chapters. But I am all caught up today. Um but, you know, it's been so good for me just to um, 
you know, read this book of Luke. I've read Luke a lot of times. I love the book of Luke. And, you know, we find the Christmas story in there in the first chapter um, or maybe the first two chapters, something like that. But, you know, it it does lead us to to think about that what Mary and to, and Joseph, how they were living in anticipation, not expectation, but they were living in anticipation of, of Christ's arrival and just things she went through. So the book of Luke, I, I just have really enjoyed reading this and just digging into it and, and, and seeing it. And I actually decided that I would read it out of my grandmother's Bible. So I know I've, I've I know y'all have seen me post a few pictures, but this is her Bible, and it's all marked up. It's just got, I mean, she's got all kind of words marked in here. She's got other scripture references, and so as I've been reading Luke, I've been reading her notes in the in the uh, margins, and, um, and then go into the verses, you know, that she has outlined in here. So it's just been really cool just to see, you know, what my grandmother had written in the book of Luke, so it's just been real fun, but, um, my next little, so I would encourage you, if, you, if you're if you not doing that, hey, you got time, you might have to read about three, four chapters a night to get caught up, but hey, it's worth it. Um, so I would just encourage you to do that. Get caught up and you, you know, it's, it's just day nine. So you can, you can get caught up very quickly. Um, but I would just encourage you, if you haven't done that, just do it. Um, it's been really good. But I wanted to read this scripture I was reading this morning. So I have a confession. I had to read day eight and I had to read chapters eight and nine today because I did not uh, read it yesterday. But um, so in here, and I, I think I'm right by saying this, in chapter seven, he was in Capernaum. And, and I think that um, in chapter eight, he was still in Capernaum. Well, then it's, it says that they went across the lake. That's the Sea of Galilee. They went um across the lake to the land of the the gatherings the country of the gatherings and and he actually um delivered a a man from demon possession so that that's in here it's this is in um verses like 26 through uh i guess around 38 39 something like that so anyway he delivered this man from these demons and actually he didn't just have one um, when Jesus asked him what the guy's name, I mean, asked the devil, the demon, what his name was, he said, Legion, because we are many. And so it wasn't just that this guy had one demon that he was possessed by. He was possessed by a whole bunch of them. And actually, um, you know, he would like have fits. I guess, <laughs> I guess that's a Southern term for it. But they would like put him in chains, bind him in chains. And then when, you know, I don't know, when he would have a fit, he would come out of the chain. So he would break them. So, you know, it's pretty crazy. But the Lord delivered him. Jesus delivered him. And um, you can go read that. But, you know, it just really amazed me, you know, when I read these things. And then it'll say, um, let me see what scripture it is. Um, yeah, so, so 37, you know, you've got all these people that see this man now he's like clothed and in his right mind and you know he's a completely changed person and it says then the whole multitude of the country of the gatherings round about sought jesus to de and asked him to depart from them they were like jesus we know what you did for this man but we want you to get it out of our midst because i mean we just think this is just i mean we just don't want any part of it i mean can you just imagine that Jesus has turned this guy's life around and these people are like, we're scared of, of you because of this, you know, and they're like, get out of our country. You know, we, we don't even want you around anymore. I mean, I just, to me, that just, that just floors me because here that Jesus has changed this guy's life and the people around see it. They see the difference in him and it's a positive difference too. It's not like, you know, it's a negative thing. It's a positive thing. And they're like, Jesus, get out of town. Um, you know, I just, I don't understand that. But then I think about today, we do the same thing, you know, um, we reject Christ too sometimes and, and we send him packing, you know, we're like, you know, we want to go do our own thing, you know? Um, so, you know, then I was reading on down and this is really the verse that, that my, my last thing is waiting. Um, and I just, I read this and then I, I read it again and I read it again and I read it again, but it's verse 40 and it says, and it came to pass. So 
And it came to pass that when Jesus was returned. So Jesus did what the people of the Gadarenes, what they wanted. They wanted him to leave. So he left and he went back to Capernaum. And it says, and it came to pass that when Jesus was returned, the people gladly received him, for they were all waiting for him. The people received him, for they were all waiting for him. And so I thought about that. Are you waiting for Christ? Are you living in anticipation of his return? Because he is coming back. It's up to us to be ready for him to come back. And it says, and it came to pass that when Jesus returned, the people gladly received him for they were all waiting for him. So I just want to know tonight, are you waiting for Christ? Are you living in anticipation for him to return like these people were? He left. He left these people. He was doing great things in Capernaum. He left because he had a mission in gatherings to deliver a man. He goes over there. He delivers that man. The people there, they were not living in anticipation. They sent Jesus packing, basically, and said, get out of here. We don't want any part of you. But then the people he had left, the people where he had been ministering to them, they were still there. And they were eagerly anticipating his return and they were waiting for him. That I, I mean, I, I don't know if that strikes you like it struck me. But I was like, am I living in this kind of anticipation where I'm waiting for Jesus to return? Am I living with that kind of excitement and anticipation and I'm looking for him? They, I, I bet they were probably standing there on the shore of the Sea of Galilee watching for that boat to be coming back across. You know, they were eagerly anticipating his return. And I'm pretty sure when he walked on, when he came, when he came back, you know, those people were like worshiping him. And then um, and then there's two other things in here that, that I love. And I'm just going to leave you with this. But when he came back, there was a centurion, um, Jairus, that was there waiting. He was a ruler of the synagogue. Maybe it wasn't a centurion. I think I had that wrong. But he was a ruler of the synagogue. And his daughter was was dying. And, and he had come to get Jesus to, to go to his house and um, heal her. And it was at this point that another familiar story happened where the woman with an issue of blood for 12 years touched his garment. She touched the hem of his garment and she was made whole instantly. And then Jesus turned around and said, who touched me? And then Peter was like, are you serious, Lord? I mean, there's a million people, maybe not a million, maybe a thousand. There, there, there's like all these people there, and you're asking who touched you? There's like a hundred people touching you at any one time. And he's like, no, somebody touched me, and I felt virtue flow out of me. And so when you live in anticipation of his return, and you're waiting for him, and you're looking for him, then when he comes, you're going to get your miracle because you're going to reach out and touch him through.